Hello and welcome back to Buckle Up. I'm Harry King and this is the Hyundai Kona, specifically the N-Line version with the 1.6 litre engine. And today I'm gonna to find out if it's any good. So here at the front, we have a massive departure from the previous generation of Kona. They've brought it much more in line with the rest of the Hyundai crossover range. You've got this light bar up here, which is the daytime running light, gives it a really great look, especially at night. And then the full lights are actually down here, which means they're low, there's less glare for other drivers. This one obviously is the end line. So there's some sporty things going on. You've got this lip spoiler down here and all the grills are in black. I'm really loving this red color on this one as well. And then moving down the side, we have these fabulous 18 inch alloy wheels. I really love the design of these and I love the fact that you still get a decent amount of tire sidewall so the ride is not too compromised. Again, black details for the end line. You've got an end line badge here, just like the one on the front. And you can see they've started putting in the creases that you find on the Bayon and the Tucson to again bring this more in line. I also think the overall silhouette of this car is so much improved over the previous generation. I felt that the previous Kona, it looked kind of stunted or cut off at the back. It seemed a little bit too tall. This is lower, leaner, wider, meaner. I like it a lot, but let's see how it looks at the back. So again, they've, they've matched off the front and the back. You've got this light bar and you've got the lights here at the side. You also have this high level brake light here on this spoilerette. And down here, you have a diffuser, but you also have dual exhaust tips and they are real and I, I really like them. You have the name spread wide over the back, just below your Hyundai badge. I shall open the automatic tailgate and then we'll find the boot with 466 litres of space, or 1,300 litres with the seats folded down. But before I fold the seats, I just want to show you, it's got a false floor. So this will fold down to give you a little bit more room, or you can have it in the raised up position, which then gives you a flush entry point to the boot. If you lift it up, you'll find there is enough space in here for a spare tire, but you don't get one. What you do get is a tire mobility kit, and then a huge amount of room to store things discreetly under the boot floor if you so wish. There's a little cubby on this side, speaker on this side, and then there's various hooks and tethering points around the place. You have a conventional parcel shelf like you would get in a hatchback. I will just remove that as that will let us see more clearly what's going on with the seats. So unlike quite a few rivals, you do have a center folding seat. Um, so that would be 40, 20, 40 split folding, uh, which means you can through load something like skis or fishing poles, um, if you want to, uh, uh, you also can just fold all the seats down and then you do have a continuous load floor, though it's not completely flat. Let's see though, with those seats folded back up, if they're any good to sit in. Well, I must say I am pleasantly surprised by how much room there is back here. Um, when I looked at the sloping roof line, I thought that I might not fit my head in, but actually I've got headroom to spare. I've got knee room. This seat is in my driving position. This is seriously impressive for a car of this size. I wouldn't usually expect to fit. In terms of comfort, the seats are Allen Cantara, even here in the back. I do have a center armrest if I wish to fold it down with cup holders in it, but if you're using this middle seat, it's not too elevated. There is quite a big hump in the floor and the overall width of the car isn't that wide, but three children I think would be relatively comfortable. And speaking of children, there is Isofix. Other practicalities, I've got two USB-Cs down here in the back of the center console, as well as some air vents. I've got seat back pockets, but they're just little net jobs. So you won't fit a huge amount in there, but it would do for a phone or an iPad. I've got bottle holders in the door, but it kind of is just a bottle holder. And then the grab handle itself kind of doubles as a small pocket if you needed to store something there and in this model i've got rear heated seats which is very premium it does feel a little bit dark in here but i've got this dark headliner because this is the n-line sporty model but the windows are actually quite big so i think it wouldn't be too much of an issue let's see though how it is in the front 
So the premium materials certainly continue up front here. I've got the same Alcantara seats. They've actually got little Alan Cantara labels on them. Although they say Alan Cantara airbag, which maybe that means the airbags are made from Alcantara. All of this is like the latest generation of Hyundai Kia tech. So I've got this steering wheel with the four dots on it. That's Morse code for H. Auto cruise, radio controls with a rotary volume dial. We love to see it. There's another rotary volume dial here under the large infotainment screen. It's also a digital display. Permanent buttons for climate control. Everything on the climate control functions on a button or a switch. It's excellent. I've got heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. That's all on buttons. I love it drive modes on buttons oh amazing i have the column mounted shifter that we first found in the ionic vehicles and then the wider cabin i've got big door pockets with space for a bottle i've got two cup holders here they're the kind that i can fold away if i want a large center storage space area for whatever reason then i can push and fold them out and i've got my cup holders wireless chi charger here as well as two usb c's and a 12 volt socket hidden by this little door which i like a lot center console storage area it's actually kind of open to the front and then you've got this tray at the top which is nice and then you've got your armrest that folds down but it means you can actually access things without having to disturb the driver by lifting this up little shelf above the glove box which is damped and a decent size but unfortunately i do have to mark it down because there's no sunglasses holder that is the one oversight in the interior in terms of tech i mean it's the usual infotainment system we've seen in a lot of hyundai products it's very good, very slick, responds well. Configurable drivers cluster that changes with the drive modes. I do also have traction modes in this, but it is front wheel drive. So I feel like that's more of a marketing gimmick than a, 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 a real utility. But I think the thing I really want to get into is this has a 200 horsepower 1.6 turbo engine and I want to drive it. So let's go and do that. Okay, so driving the Hyundai Kona. Now, there's a very specific reason I wanted to test this model. Um, those of you who are aware, Jasper has already tested this generation of Kona on the channel before, but I was intrigued to drive this one because it's got the 1.6 SmartStream engine that you also would have found in the i20 Edge. Slightly detuned in here, so 198 PS, 265 newton meters of torque, but still a healthy wadge of power for a vehicle of this size, 0 to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. And importantly, all of the petrol powered N cars are no longer on sale in Europe, which means this is kind of the closest thing in the range currently, N line with this engine. And I've got the sporty interior with all the red flashes and the Alcantara. So it certainly feels sporty on the inside. And I just wanted to see if there was some of that N magic in this car with this powertrain. So I'll shift it into sports mode and let's see what pickup's like. Ooh, ooh, that is sprightly indeed. So it's a seven speed uh, DCT. It dropped two gears then. It does have paddles. I find that if you're going for very spirited driving, paddles are the way to go. It can't quite keep up with full on performance driving left to its own devices, but the rest of the time under normal driving it's very nice very smooth and then the chassis itself it doesn't have full-blown n stuff on it so it's still a comfortable ride but i do have communication in the chassis the steering is quite light and it doesn't have the most feel it is an electric system but i can feel what's going on and really that's what you want if you're going to be doing keen driving and I think I'm not really considering this to be a performance car, but I think it could be a really fun daily. And I feel like the looks, the tech I've got in here, how nice this interior is. Really, this is, this is a rival for premium cars. There is nothing in here that I'm wanting for over an Audi or a Mercedes Benz, like an A-Class or an, an A3. And historically, the thing I would have been wanting for is performance, but this has that. 
And for this money, you'd be looking at a 1.3, a 1.4, depending on what make you're looking at in a premium car. And this has all of the bells and whistles. I think it looks better than those cars. I will say, just on the sporting front, you do sit relatively high. I mean, not in the grand scheme of things, not that high, but you're obviously not as low down as you would be in a hatchback. This is still a crossover, but the seats are good. They hug you. There's not a huge amount of side support, but because they're Alan Cantara, they do grip you in place. That's very good. And actually the overall driving position within the cabin, I feel nicely hemmed in, in a, in a sporting sort of way. Visibility is still good though. You've got that kind of upright hatchbacky style, large windows, large mirrors, and I've got cameras and reversing sensors and all that other good stuff. So it's a doddle to drive this in a built up urban area. And then on the motorway, you've got not the, uh, the most advanced system that Hyundai do. It won't change lane for you, but it will steer for you. It's got radar cruise control. It can read the speed signs and change with the speed signs if you wanted to do that. I do find that it's not the most reliable well, no system is particularly reliable at speeding, reading speed signs because it picks up things like speed limits on the back of lorries or the speed limit on a side turning road. So I wouldn't use that system. And unfortunately, it will beep at you if it believes you're speeding. So if it suddenly decides that the speed limit is five miles an hour when it's actually 60, it's then gonna complain that you're not doing five miles an hour which can be irritating, but that's not up to Hyundai, unfortunately. That's a, a mandate on all cars. So whatever brand new car you're buying is gonna have some variation of that. The one system in here I do find to be a bit touchy, a bit over the top, is the eyesight monitoring system. So it's uh, checking for my attentiveness with this little sensor on top of the steering wheel. And if that ever becomes obscured for any reason, like for example, if you're maneuvering and you put your hand up here, say in a car park, it will start moaning and saying it can't see your face. Sometimes, depending on the lighting conditions, it can't quite see your face. It panics and tells you you need to have a break. It's not happened. It's only happened once that it's had like a full meltdown for me. So it's not a deal breaker, but I, I would prefer it if that was toned down to some extent. Is there anything else I'd like to see on this car? I mean, the option for a manual would be nice. This seven-speed DCT is a lovely gearbox, really nice and smooth and easy to live with, but I do prefer driving a manual, and I know there is a manual that pairs with this engine, and it's excellent, um, and a proper handbrake as well, if we're, if we're here and doing that. Pie in the sky, I'd like to have the Kona N back in this latest model. I never really loved the styling of the previous-gen Kona, and I felt like, you, you could sense that the underpinnings of the car were not particularly premium. This one feels so much more mature and grown up and is, is such a better starting point to build something like that on. And yet, unfortunately, we're just not gonna get a new Kona N. But I think this with a two liter and an all wheel drive system, which I know not even the previous one had, but imagine a sort of Golf R rival would be excellent. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think that will be happening. So I'll just have to live with this one for now. But I think I really could live with it very seriously and genuinely. This car is ticking a lot of boxes for me. Before I go any further though, let's go back and do a proper conclusion. Right, I think this car has just about nailed my requirements for a daily driver. It's got the engine from a hot hatchback, which gives it power and urgency, and it means it's quick without being too fast, but also still surprisingly economical. It's unassuming, but attractive. The space on the inside, and it's very comfortable, and there's loads of technology. It's just ticking all my boxes. Love it. Great job from Hyundai. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Uh, if you go down into the description, you'll find all of our social medias. You'll also find two ways to support the channel. So we've got uh, merchandise that I'm currently wearing, and we also have channel memberships. Um, so please go and do one or all of those things, and we'll see you next time.
Bye-bye.